What is up, players? War Boss Tay up in his mug. Welcome to a showcase video of the Death Guard Terminators that I've been working on for commission now. And I'm really glad I was able to finish this project. I'm about to meet the client and drop them off with him. And I'm just looking over everything. And I'm just so happy with how it all turned out. I'm very excited to show it to you guys. I hope you enjoy it. This is a general view of everything I've worked on in this commission. It's the magnetized arms and the base bodies. The bodies were created, I'm not sure if you saw my uh, preview video before, but they are plastic Chaos Terminator legs with the Forge World torsos and then magnets in the arms. Now, in order to... Oh, th the heads are attached to the torsos, so I didn't have to worry about that. It's just torso, legs, base. These were all provided by the client. It looks like they even weighted or magnetized the base as well, which is pretty cool. So uh, th the magnets were covered. I covered them with sealer. Um, gosh, what do you call it? Like it's my Vallejo liquid mask is what it's called. So it's kind of like you, you put it on the magnets and you kind of spread it out and then it hardens into a very kind of rubbery, rubbery kind of finish. And then you can spray over it. You could paint around it. It doesn't kind of gunk up the magnet itself. And then when you're ready, you just take your, your hobby knife or whatever, and then you scrape it away and you could kind of see where the paint uh, where the putty, the liquid mask is still kind of built up around the magnets. And uh, once you scrape it away though, then you should be able to get back to your magnet and see it. And it's uh, perfectly, perfectly clear and ready for paint. The models were finished with, or were done with deck tan shaded or rack art flesh. I'm sorry, rack art flesh was the first layer shaded with seraphim sepia painted back up adding deck tan and then doing chips using a mixture of dryad bark and Abaddon black. They came out really, really great. The gold was done with Balthazar gold, which is more of a rich reddish gold than retributor armor, which I think is more of a yellowish gold and then shaded with seraphim sepia and then given a little bit of agrax earth shade to shade a little bit more and then highlighted back up use runefang steel for the chips on the gold so it's more of like a silvery metallic the transfers are all done with forge world death guard transfers from their legion sheet so this is the 30k these are the 30k legion or 30k uh, death guard legion transfers on these models and i'm so so happy i got to work with them uh, it looks like I have to paint a little bit more over the, the bases, but I'll, I'll do that before I hand them over to the client. Let's take a look at, at everything else. The effects, I tried to go with the minimal, like the client requested minimum mutation, these guys to be done in their original Death Guard Legion color scheme, uh, but some of them are built to have like boils and, and really weird growths or corrosion in their armor. So I really had to do something and so what I decided to do was kind of make it minimal by keeping the rust and the corrosion and the chipping as as minimal as I could without making it too clean. These guys do have all of this battle damage and corrosion. And so uh, I, I did have to put a little bit, but I, I tried not to go too overboard with it and really enforce the, uh, the, the ivory cream color to pop through. I use a lot of Games Workshop's technical paints. Like in here, you could see the uh, Tamiya Clear Red. You could also use Blood for the Blood God, but I love Tamiya Clear Red mixed. And then once that's dried, I painted in a little bit of Nurgle's Rot. So you can kind of see it's kind of bloody, but also it's got that green mucusy color in there as well. Just terrific. Same thing for the top here. First, I laid down the blood and then a little bit of lining of the Nurgle's Rot. And you can see that for everything. First, go with the blood and then go with the mucus kind of seeping through. So this looks really gross and sickly. I tried to space out the transfers. So if there were some clear hip pads, then I would use a transfer there. The crossed sights is in the fluff. It's a mark of, of distinction by Mortarion. Now, the Death Guard is not a decorative unit, which is why there's not a lot of decorative script or ostentation. There's just like the serial number here on the front of their armor. There's the Legion number, which is 14. You're gonna see that repeated a lot. And then they might have their uh, crossed sights. And that just means that Mortarion has recognized them as being an effective warrior. And uh, I think it's it's really cool that the Death Guard, that, that's what they're all about. This guy's so great. I mean, just look at that. It looks like a uh, 
David Cronenberg film. I did just Tamiya Clear Red around his head because it's just kind of like mutating into his armor there. I uh, painted the eyeball for this little skull guy so it looks like he's looking forward and laughing. And then there's a little maggot coming out his left eye socket. Just really gross stuff. Okay, so now what I'm going to do is I'm going to show show you what the models look like with they've got two sets of weapons what i call the classic which is the plastic chaos terminator weapons and then they've got the betrayal at calp weapons for the more close-up work so the chain fist and the lightning claws and um, i'll show you what they look like with the transfers that i've put on them everything has a transfer if i can fit it on there's going to be a transfer on it somewhere so we'll take a look at that in just a sec all right here's our first guy and they look so, I mean, they look great without their, uh, the Forge World torsos look so great without anything. But once you really give them their arms, they really just get so chunky and beefy looking. Especially when you add in effects like the, uh, the weather, the battle damage, the corrosion, just looks so great. So he's got a Reaper Auto Cannon here, the crossed sights there on his shoulder pad and um, like I said these were all provided for me already magnetized my studio doesn't offer magnetization just yet but um, they were all really well done the magnets fit perfectly they lock into place really nicely and um, they look great they look seamless when you put them on the table so you're the first guy and yeah it just came out really well I did use some I forgot to mention when I was painting these guys I painted some Sotet green as the verdigris and I tried to line it in all of the gold areas, wherever there's a little gold and uh, meeting gold. I just painted a very thin line into the seam there to kind of uh, give a little bit of pop of that verdigris corroded metal look. Here's a guy with, uh, again, Reaper auto cannon and chain fist there on that side. So crossed sides there on the shoulder pad, mark of honor. And um, these guys don't have too much double uh, double insignia for, for the the betrayal of Kalth arms you'll see in a second. I really built them up with uh, two two transfers on each limb. But these guys already have like the, the molded shoulder pads and not too much space on their forearms. But the client did request uh, as much pre-heresy or heresy era heraldry as I could stack on there and I'm really happy with the way they came out not sure what this weapon is I don't remember I think the client mentioned that some of these were taken from the Deathwing the Deathwing Terminator kit the Deathwing Knights or something and uh, I think that's really great because they've got that gold sensor balls which you can use to very very easily kind of uh, indicate Nurgle this guy's got the the double bolter the twin or the crossed sights again this guy looks great and this fellow here he's got a combi melta and again you can see the the blue in the vertigree and the in the corners there and a lightning claws on this side and finally i'm saying this guy for last because i love i love the way that this magnetized limb came out it's a uh, deathwing knight the one with the sensor flail and just looks so good when put on a chaos nurgle model very very good and a uh, power axe on that side and there's him all right we're gonna switch the arms and show you what they look like with the betrayal of kalp arms in just a sec all right let's take a look at these guys with their lightning claws and chain fists so for these, like I mentioned, there's a lot more surface area that I was able to work with for putting on transfers. So this guy here has got the crossed sights and the 14 on his right shoulder pad. And on the left side, he's got the crossed sights and the Death Guard logo. I tried to make a mix mash of the crossed sights, the number 14, and their logo. And some of these were already resin shoulder pads that have those, like these, the crossed sights and the... Death Guard logo are already molded on, so it's easy enough for me to just get a uh, numeral or another small icon like the uh, the cross sites or the uh, insignia, and just add those on. But again, they they went on really really well. If you're working with transfers, then you definitely want to use Microsol and Microset, and then also uh, think about using Art Coat and either Lamian Medium or Matte Varnish 
after. Art coat is the first thing you want to put on. So you seal the paint job so the paint job won't scratch or chip. And then once the art coat is dry, put some micro set, put the transfer on. The set is to help it kind of place itself when you're moving it around. Like if you put it at a bad angle, the micro set will actually help you to move it around so that it doesn't stick. The transfer doesn't stick to the that surface. And then once it's where you want it to be, kind of let the micro set dry, then go back with the micro saw. And what the micro saw does is it dissolves the um, it dissolves the, the transfer. So what Microset also does, it, it helps it to adhere to a curved surface. So for like shoulder pads, whatnot, the micro, uh, micro set is really good at kind of softening the transfer so that it won't create any ugly uh, bubbles, air bubbles when you're, when it's drying. And then micro set, like I, or micro sol, like I said, will dissolve the transfer. So it creates this seamless kind of melding into the surface around it. Then you just take your, uh, matte varnish or your Lamian medium and when you paint it on it gets rid of the shine so that it does look like it was kind of um, painted on and it doesn't have that transfer shine like when you look at a transfer and you put it on a model sometimes it has this plasticky kind of shine to it and uh, that's why because you could still see the plastic the plastic hasn't melted like for this one I have to put a little bit of varnish on the belt buckle you see that shine right there catches the light it kind of makes it look fake and plasticky whereas this one here or on the shoulder pad it doesn't reflect the light because the the plastic of the transfer has been kind of dissolved and the matte varnish covers it and gets rid of that reflective quality all right so that's my uh commission for the death guard cataphracty terminators painted in pre-heresy colors i hope you guys liked it i'm so happy that i i got this uh, job finished because um, it was so much fun to paint and I actually logged all of my steps in my processes so when I'm working on my uh, tutorials for the pre-heresy color scheme I can show it to you live in real time I think it's going to be a lot of fun all right thanks for watching everybody and I know this one was a long one but I'm, I'm glad you you stuck through it we'll see you in the next video if you'd like to see pictures of all of these models I'm posting them up on my Facebook War Boss Tay or you can uh, see them on my Twitter at WarBossTay. And uh, like I said, if you ever want me to uh, want to contact me about possibly painting something for you, you can get at me at WarBossTayStudios at gmail.com. Thanks for watching.